Welcome to Blue Collar Sports Talk. Let's talk sports. Hey, everybody, Daryl here. Just a little disclaimer about today's show. When I made this, I thought it was hilarious that I was trying to decide what photos to use for everybody. And then I went, hey, what about AI? Some of them, some of them look just ridiculous, and I think it's hilarious. So I went with it. That's today's disclaimer for the show. And now here's the show. I'll stop talking about stupid AI pics. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining and listening. Um, I wanted to talk solely today about trades and transfers and how they had amazing success when they went to different programs and for the college people, different schools. But since Trev Alberts decided to run away, I wanted to guess on some reasons why. Why would a smart person want to be tied to an institution looking at a massive lawsuit from Ashley Scoggins want to leave? Why would they want to leave during this time? Huh. Okay. Um, why would a smart person turn down more money with a better recruiting footprint? Huh. When Nebraska Public Media published an article on Trev's so-called issues monitoring the budget, I feel schools looked at Trev's ability to sell boosters on the idea of giving donations to help with the operating budget as a win, not a negative. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the descriptions to that article and... I didn't want to dive too far into Trev leaving Lincoln for College Station and the Texas A&M family, other than to say good luck and wish you the best in the SEC. I will forever remember Trev as the AD that fired Scott Frost and brought in Matt Rule and the AD that completed the task of getting our volleyball team to play under the lights at Memorial Stadium. And now we're, we're able to have a, a new chapter, a new head of the athletic department. And I can't wait to see what, uh, what that brings. Okay, okay. Now on to the trades and the transfers. As the nil era has ushered in an ever daunting task to lure and keep athletes, I wanted to take a look at some recent transfers from the college ranks and also some epic trades in the professional side of sports. Now, there was a time when Joe Burrow was thinking about transferring into the Husker program. But instead, he left Ohio State for LSU and won a national championship. And in Scott Frost's third year, the Huskers went three and five. Yeah, in summary, Burrow made a wise decision going to LSU. Another NCAA QB that transferred. Now, this one goes back a little bit further. Jake Coker. Jake transferred before nil was invented. And he won a national title with Florida State as a backup to true freshman Jameis Winston in 2014. He realized that Winston, a true freshman at the time, a Heisman Trophy winner, that Winston would return as a starter. And Coker left for Alabama. Now, in 2014, Coker was the backup to Blake Sims, but that following year won the starting job and the national title against Deshaun Watson and the Clemson Tigers. Now, I'm going to pick on Scott Frost because I think it's fun. It truly is. Now, before Scott Frost was fired, I'll say that again, before Scott Frost was fired as coach at UNL, he transferred into the Husker program from Stanford. And during his senior season, helped the Huskers win a share of a national title with a blowout win versus Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Volunteers. 
That was all before Scott Frost got fired as the coach. Um, Cam Newton. Let's go back and, and look at what Cam Newton did. Now, Cam Newton was at a program, um, you might remember, with Urban Meyer as the head coach, the Florida Gators. He got hurt. He got arrested, suspended, and then Cam Newton decided, well, I'm going to join a junior college squad. And this was before he transferred to Auburn, where he won the Heisman, a comeback win versus Alabama to help them secure the SEC title, and then the national title game by defeating the Oregon Ducks in 2010. Now, that's an interesting scenario. Cam Newton uh, didn't just transfer. He basically was required to remove himself from a situation after the coach said, no, 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 see you later, bye. You are a headache and you have to go. And then a junior college was like, oh man, yeah, this is great. And then he transferred back to an Auburn team that was like, yeah, you're an amazing talent. Come help us win a title. So some of these trades and transfers that I'm talking about, they're interesting to me in, in the reason why they happened. Now, fast forward to now, the now now, not the then then, but the now now. Um, Kayliani Akana, and I apologize, Akana, I probably butchered your first name, but she was a former Husker. And she decided to transfer to Texas. The theory of why she transferred is that the Huskers at the time were not interested in having her brother play football here. Again, thank you, Scott Frost. So she left, went to Texas, and won a national title with Texas. Kayla Caffey, also a former Husker, transferred to that same Texas squad. Now, fast forward a couple years, and former Husker Whitney Lonstein recently joined the Texas. And this year, will that mean another title for Texas? Time will tell. I wish Big Hit Wit all the luck and all the best down in Texas. That's going to be some fun volleyball to watch. I'm, I'm now going to switch gears. I'm going to completely get out of the college ranks and I'm going to look at some fun stuff that happened in the NFL to start with. And I'm going to start with the Drew Brees trade. And every Charger fan grumbles about it. He was traded from San Diego to New Orleans and won a title, a Super Bowl, in 2010 by defeating the Vikings. Now, the Drew Brees trade was started because of concerns about a surgically repaired shoulder. I would say that shoulder healed rather nicely. Nicely enough to win a Super Bowl and have a stellar career with the Saints. Another quarterback that I'm going to talk about wasn't traded, per se. Kurt Warner. He was cut by the Packers. Then transitioned to arena football and then picked up in 1998 as a backup. Played one game. The following year, due to an injury, played with the Rams as an undrafted free agent and went on to win the Rams a Super Bowl. That team earned the title, Greatest Show on Turf. Kurt was released by the Rams, and then after being with the Giants one season, he helped the Phoenix Cardinals shine as bright as the Arizona sun. Pretty good for a guy that got cut by the Packers. Another one of those deals where the Packers fans just sigh a little bit. Oh, why couldn't we keep him? Again, you never know. Coaches and players don't always get along in one system. They find another coach or another system that helps them shine. Or it wouldn't be a greatest show on turf discussion without talking Marshall Falk. In 1998, Falk and the Colts finished 3-13. Yes, 1998 was Peyton Manning's rookie year. 
the year where he had more interceptions than touchdowns. On the flip side of that, in 1998, Marshall Falk had over 1,300 yards rushing and over 2,000 combined yards. With all of that awesome, <clears throat> excuse me, with all of that offensive production, no one can blame Falk for wanting to renegotiate his contract. Well, except the Colts, of course. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't they? The Colts started looking for trade partners. They searched high, they searched low, and finally, the city of St. Louis answered the call and agreed to a trade that sent Falk to the Rams. And the Colts then needed a running back, so they drafted Edger and James. Somehow, that was one of those rare trades where both teams benefited. The Rams won the Super Bowl in 2000, and Falk again had over 2,000 combined yards with over 1,300 yards rushing. And the Colts did pretty decent with Peyton Manning. He seemed to brush off that uh, brutal defeat he had in college at the hands of uh, Scott Frost, the guy who got fired as the Husker coach. I just love saying that Scott Frost got fired. I'm sure I'll say it again. Scott Frost got fired. There you go. I, did, I said it again. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. Traded by the Bills in 2010, in spite of him having multiple thousand-yard seasons. One must wonder, hmm, had Marshawn not allegedly ran over a pedestrian in downtown Buffalo, would he have helped the Bills win a title? Instead, he was traded because the Bills were sick of it. He then becomes beast mode and help the Seahawks win a title in 2014. Other recent trades. You'll remember the Lions traded Stafford to the Rams. Of course, Stafford helped the Rams win a title in 2022. And in this recent trade, I won't go into too much detail, but other than to say Jared Goff is doing great things in Detroit now. And what, what does it take to stay with a team? Goff is a great talent, but if you don't get along with your boss, you can bet your ass you'll be traded. That all this discussion is really about. That's all this discussion is really about. At times you fit a system or a need. And once you're not liked by the coaches or teammates or city, or you don't fit that need, or you want too much money in a new contract, you can and will be sent down the road. Now, I'm going to move it over to another pro sport, the NBA. So, let's, let's go back to the summer of 2007. Yes, I'm going to talk about the Celtics. It's required by law. In the summer of 2007, Ray Allen was traded from the Seattle Supersonics. Seattle, I truly hope you get another team. I do. It's unfortunate that you allowed them to leave and go to Oklahoma City. Mini rant stopped and going back to the Ray Allen trade. Okay, I apologize. Here we are. In the summer of 2007, Ray Allen was traded from the Seattle Supersonics to Boston. Now, this trade also would include Glenn Big Baby Davis. It would also open up trade talks with the Timberwolves for Kevin Garnett. Also, the prior year, the Celtics drafted Rajon Rondo. Those two trades matched with Paul Pierce. And the second year, Rajon Rondo, yeah, led to a title. Weird. That much talent on one team. And, of course, Ray Allen was then traded to the Heat, where he again won a title. Moving on, Dennis Rodman. Very colorful character. Before joining the Bulls, he won two championships with the Pistons. Yes, was then traded to the Bulls after a brief run in San Antonio, and, of course, won titles with Chicago. Now, depending on who you talk to, Phil Jackson, for example, Phil claimed that Dennis 
was the MVP of the Bulls' 95-96 season. Not sure how much Dennis paid him to say that, but, you know, again, depending on who you talk to. Dennis was the much-needed piece for the Pistons to win titles, as well as a great player to help the Bulls win. Dennis Rodman was never scared to defend anyone, including playing defense against players that outweighed him by at least 70 pounds. I'm looking at you, Shaq. And because of that attitude, to never back down, Rodman won the rebounding crown a record seven consecutive times in the NBA. Is Dennis Rodman a colorful character? Yes. And tough to coach? Sure. But winning titles heals a lot of headaches. Now, of course, no trade discussion would be complete without mentioning King LeBron James, or Baby LeBron, as I like to call him, he was traded away from Cleveland and sent to Miami. Now, in Miami, James, Bosch, and Dwayne Wade would win two titles. After those two titles, he went back to Cleveland for one, then to the Lakers for one. Now, <clears throat> I felt the need to mention LeBron's trade because that trade to the Lakers really helped recruit Anthony Davis from the Pelicans. And I truly doubt Davis would have ever won a title in New Orleans. And the trade helped to get Davis out of New Orleans, paired him with LeBron, and got him that title in L.A. Let's talk about some brothers. Mark Gasol. Mark Gasol was stellar with the Grizzlies. And after the Grizzlies... The Raptors made a huge swing for the fences and landed Kawhi Leonard. Then the Raptors realized, hey, we could have used some help on the inside. We need a big man. Boom, Mark Gasol. The Raptors added that integral piece to their championship roster with Gasol. Gasol would go on to start every game during the postseason run that led to the NBA championship and made life uncomfortable for the small ball-styled Golden State Warriors. Now, if we're discussing Mark, yes, I mentioned brothers, we need to discuss his brother, Pa. When the Lakers traded the draft rights for brother Mark to the Grizzlies, Pa was traded to the Lakers. And this Gasol instantly made an impact. He started every single game for the Lakers and helped them to an amazing start to the season with a 22-5 and record with him in the starting lineup. L.A. would then cruise through the first three rounds of the playoffs and advance to the NBA Finals for the first time since the 03-04 season. Though the Lakers fell short to the Boston Celtics in six games, Gasol would help lead the Lakers to three consecutive NBA Finals appearances and two championships. That trade of brothers led to two storied careers. Hey, thanks for listening. If you listen on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe. And if you listen on Spotify, please hit follow. Go watch some sports.